Welcome to our Off-Grid Australian Families Day in the Life adventure. Before we start today, I just wanted to give you a fair heads up. This video may include activities that some viewers might find a bit uncomfortable. So if you're queasy easily, or if you're a vegan or vegetarian, this might not be the video for you. We respect all lifestyle choices and we want everyone to enjoy our content. So please proceed with caution. If you've been following along with us on our journey, you'll know that we've had a lot of wild goats coming in on our property recently. And these goats are an introduced pest in Australia. Our dog Truffles does a wonderful job of trying to keep the wild goat at bay so they don't eat our new trees and plants and veggies and herbs and everything. And these wild goat have a detrimental impact on the Australian environment. They overgraze native vegetation, leading to soil erosion and the degradation of natural habitats. This results in a loss of biodiversity and disrupts ecosystems. They compete with the native wildlife for food and water resources. And this competition can put additional stress on already vulnerable native species, particularly during times of drought where resources are limited. The goats consume large quantities of vegetation, reducing the available food supply for both native herbivores and domestic livestock. So in Australia, to address the issue of feral, feral goats, various control methods are employed, including culling, trapping and fencing. And in some areas uh, to manage feral goat populations sustainably, they're harvesting them for their meat and other products. Now, while our family is trying to move towards a more self-sufficient way of life, it's essential to remember that everyone's choices are valid. And some of our viewers may be vegetarian or vegan, and we respect those choices. Our way of life may not align with everyone's beliefs, and that's perfectly okay. So we do enjoy keeping chickens for their eggs. And this morning, Nanda Mary is collecting the eggs. So far, we're getting between six and eight eggs per day. Six was the growth of oh. And Eli has just dug a hole for us so that we can transplant our olive tree into the ground. And Eli is also going about restocking our firewood in the shed. And then they're going out to collect some rocks so that we can build a garden bed. Hey. Time to get some rest because tomorrow we're going to get up and go out and get a big old billy goat for to use for dog meat. So it's going to be a big day. So first thing in the morning, Paul shot a big old billy goat. And we've hung it up on this tree so that we can skin it and butcher it. Slaughtering and skinning a goat isn't any different than deer or lamb. So you follow the same practices to gut the animal or remove the lower shank portions and the head. So you basically what Paul's doing is making an incision around the anus carefully so as not to puncture the intestines and work the skin back and sort of peel it down. We're using this one for dog meat, but goat is one of the most eaten meats around the world. After you skin the animal, you usually want to hang the carcass for 24 hours before butchering it the rest of the way. We're just doing it straight away in this instance. 
So my personal opinion is, is if you kill an animal, you should save every part and use every part as much as possible. It's never pleasant watching an animal die or be slaughtered and butchered. It's quite confronting. But I think if we eat meat, we're kidding ourselves if we think that if we don't see it, it doesn't matter. And more and more people who are taking that path of living more self-sufficiently are raising their animals and harvesting the meat. And apparently mobile butchers are run off their feet by going around to people's property to help them slaughter and butcher their animals. A lot of people these days are looking at ways that they can take more control and be more confident that the foods they put on their table involves little harm or an amount of harm that they are comfortable with. People who use these mobile butchers usually um, have the animal slaughtered, then they're quartered and hung in a cool room for about 10 days and up to two weeks. And then the mobile butcher returns to butcher the meat into the different cuts. A lot more people are giving raising animals a go because they want to ensure their meat is humanely raised. So when a animal is taken to the abattoirs to be um, slaughtered, they go onto a truck which is very unfamiliar to the animal and they're transported and then they go to a place where they can smell the blood from other animals that, that might have died yesterday or the week before and it's very stressful them, for them every step of the way. And even the RSPCA has agreed that mobile slaughtering units with experienced operators can eliminate the stress for the animals, but the killing must be done humanely. The animal should be killed instantly without pain, suffering or distress. So Paul has been a member or a participant of the Farmer Assist program. So to become one of those members to be able to display a competent level of proficiency in firearm use, which is basically to an appropriate level of marksmanship equivalent to commercial harvesters, so professional shooters. So they need to also be able to display that they can perform the task at ham with an acceptable manner in high regard to animal welfare. And the principles of ethical hunting and shooting includes, you know, the fact that the shooter should make every effort to get as close as possible to the intended target and to shoot from a stable supported position, such as using like a, um, a bipod or a um, shooting rest, a fence post or a natural object such as tree branches or a rock to rest on. And Paul is also a range officer from a shooting club, so he's got a pretty good shot. So anyway, the Farmer Assist program is to help with pe pest animal control, conservation and animal welfare. Skinning and butchering a goat is a complex process and it's essential to approach this task with respect to the animal. Paul should also be wearing gloves and a clean apron. You should also have access to clean water for washing your hands as, and tools as you go along. So once you've opened the body cavity and removed the organs, then you need to be careful um, by looking for any abnormalities or signs of disease in there. So my uncle Peter and my cousin Andrew are both butchers, so I might have to get them down here on the property one day. I think you are meant to cut the head off um, for it to hang and for the carcass to be able to drain as well. Because we're only using this goat meat for the dog, we're not really that concerned about how the flesh is going to come off. But um, some people strip every bit of flesh off the goat and just use it to make hamburgers or mince. Others uh, keep the whole sections intact for roasting and things like that. Paul's cutting the skin away here, but if you carefully cut through the skin from the around the ankle joint in each of the legs, you can actually peel the skin away from the body, working down towards the front legs. But Paul's actually using a proper skinning knife here to do the job. 
most Americans and Australians really aren't raised on eating goat. They usually eat beef, pork and chicken. So sometimes goat can seem a bit strange to people for eating for the first time. But if you go to other countries, they eat goat all the time. And if you were butchering an animal for yourself, obviously you would have a clean bucket underneath to catch all the offal and the inside so that you could save all the parts that you wanted, like the liver and the heart and all of that. So unlike cows, goats build fat from the inside out and don't produce intramuscular fat. So that means when you look at goat meat, it isn't going to have the marbling that you're used to seeing. Instead, it's lean, bright red, and it shows the grain well. If you're preparing meat for yourself rather than just a dog, obviously it's going to be a lot more hygienic than this. Um, having a table covered in butcher's paper in which you can dissect all your parts is probably one of, a, one of the good options. And wearing gloves would also be a must. And I just want to add one more thing. Posing with a dead animal's body after hunting it will never be impressive to me. And some of the things that take place behind closed doors at the slaughterhouses really um, seems barbaric and horrible. And it almost m makes me want to um, start a vegan or vegetarian diet myself. Not to mention how animals are raised and kept during their lives until they're killed as well in, in little cages and and horrible things like that. So I think we've become so distant from our food and where it comes from that it's actually difficult for people to respect it. People just eat their cheeseburgers and they don't have to face the awful reality of how that came about. We really need to learn how to show the respect the animal deserves. So I'm excited on one hand that we're living more self-sufficiently, but on the other hand, I was sad to see this animal die. But I've come to the conclusion that my conflicting feelings are nothing to be ashamed of. I don't ever want to get to the point where I'm completely calloused to the cycles of life and death. If all of us meat-eating people took part in the butchering process, Perhaps we would be less wasteful and more mindful of what we eat if we had a first-hand role in its living and its dying. At least out here, this goat has had 140 acres at least of wide open space to graze, run and play up to right until the very end. So as part of our homesteading journey, we're still learning and honing our skills. And this goat today is part of that journey. I would have thought she would have had enough by now. And even though I felt sad for the goat, I also appreciate the experience of learning a skill that is fast becoming extinct in our modern culture. And Truffles is pretty excited that she's got all this meat frozen to eat when she's ready. <laughs> Before I go today, I just wanted to take a moment to express my heartfelt thanks to each and every one of you. You know, the one, of, one of the most incredible things about our community here on YouTube is the diversity of thoughts, values and opinions that we all bring to the table. That's what makes YouTube so special. We've seen an outpouring of support and understanding from you, our viewers, when it comes to respecting and engaging with different perspectives. You've shown us that it's possible to have healthy and constructive conversations even when we disagree. So I look forward to chatting to you soon.